Welcome to Find Hosted Study Files with the Data Browser. This video is part of the Seven Bridges onboarding lesson. In this video, you will learn all about the Data Browser and how it can help you connect your projects to data sets that are important to you. The main concepts are that you can find all study files for NHLBI hosted data sets in the data browser. The data available is diverse and covers several heart, lung, blood, and sleep disorder studies, as well as COVID and other population scale studies. There are many open training data sets as well. Anyone can access the open training data sets. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to find and filter the NHLBI hosted study data files. Link these files to your project so you don't have to move data around. You can link it directly to your project and operate them, operate on them as if they were your own copy. Access open data for testing and for result validations. And finally, understand which data sets are open and which are controlled. For the demonstration, we have two goals. The first is to query the Open 1000 Genomes dataset for CRAM files. CRAM files are uh, next generation sequencing reads um, in a compressed format. The second goal is to query the Framingham Heart Study TopMed dataset for chromosome based multi sample BCFs that fit one of the consent groups. We're going to copy both of these queries to appropriate projects, which I'll demonstrate. Let's get started. Okay, I've switched tabs, and as you can see, I'm already logged on to Biodata Catalyst powered by Seven Bridges. I'm in a project I made for this demonstration called Data Browser Project One Open Data 1000 Genomes. The goal is to demonstrate Data Browser and how to access uh, 1000 genomes, which are an open, uh, very useful data set. So, our first goal as I wrote in the description, is to find 1,000 genomes data and add it to this open data project. One clue that this is an open data project is that there's no lock icon with the word controlled. You'll see it in the next goal. So let's go ahead and get started. To get access the data browser, go to the drop-down menu and click on the first uh, feature name, data browser. The data browser organizes the data into disease type. So we have heart disease, lung disease, blood disorders, sleep disorders. There's a section for COVID-19 data, and there's a section for other. In the other section, you have the top mid combined exchange area files, which is controlled, but you also have some open data. The 1000 genomes project is not controlled, as well as these uh, training data sets uh, for BioLink. So the first thing to do would be um, to search for the study name or abbreviated name or dbGaP accession number. Since I already know I want a specific um, prod, a specific data set in, in the other category, I'm just gonna check that. Now the great thing about data browsers, you can develop some pretty complex queries where you're selecting more than one option and finding the maximum number of a specific file. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to pick one project. It knows I selected one, so I'm going to click Explore One Selected. Now, uh, if I had some saved queries, they would appear here. But the goal is we're going to start with one type of data, and then we're going to build off of that. So I normally like to start with file. Uh, when working with this type of data, but you could start with a certain number of subjects or certain sample IDs or even a certain study. So I'm going to pick the file entity. So each of the rectangles here represents an entity. So there's entities are sub, you know, a, all subjects would be an entity, all samples would be an entity. In this case, I have all files as as an entity, and we're going to filter. Uh, for a certain property. 
So the highest level is file. Then it goes properties. So uh, properties of the files include chromosome, associated chromosome, data type, data format. For more complex queries, we would add, we would connect, you know, uh, additional entities to our starting entity. But in this case, uh, we're going to do something very simple. So let me repeat. I'm going to click on file, which is going to give us the file entity. And down here on the bottom, we have tons of information. And you can see that we have 6,648 files in the 1,000 genomes data set. And just by browsing the file name, you see the unlocked green icon. So that means these are all open access. We could repeat this query with a controlled data set, and we would see that the icon changes from open to a red lock. We could still query that data set, but when we went to copy the files to our projects, it would uh, the system would programmatically check our dbGaP credentials to make sure we have appropriate credentials, and it would block us from accessing the data at that point. So if you know you're looking for a particular file, you can go ahead and click on it. On In the middle section, it gives you uh, the name of the file as well as all the metadata that's associated. So the metadata is information about the data inside the file. So I picked this one CRAM file, um, and I see that it's open. It's whole genome. It's already been aligned to version 38 of the genome. We have the total bases. We have the original location where it was when it was imported to uh, NHLBI. We know the platform, the number of reads, um, that it's open access, and when the data was submitted, uh, as well as the sequencing center. So it looks like uh, New York Genome Center sequenced this. So that's very useful, and you can you build your query based on any of this metadata. But for ease of this uh, demonstration, I'm going to just filter based on file type. So if I look down here, you know, I could filter by these properties or these values, um, but I'll show you both ways. So we could click on data format and this, and it looks in the data set and it sees that there's GDS, there's text files, there's VCF files and there's CRAM files. I can click on this CRAM cram file and then click filter by another way to find that would be to just type in the type of file you're interested in cram and it looks through all the properties to find that per anything that matches any value uh, that that matches that uh, filter so here we're going to click on cram and if we look closely on the left side we'll see that the number of files was crossed out that means we need to update. So we're going to refresh. So that cut the number of files in half. So now we have 3,202 files. Still a good number of files. Um, and the reason is because each of each genome has its own file. OK, so that's all I wanted to demonstrate for this query. But to copy the files, so what, uh, you can look in your query and um, find the copy icon next to the on the file entity. Now we're going to look for our file. So uh, if you remember, we um, oops. So we're going to look for our project, and I have a bunch of projects here. So I am going to copy it to data. Pro I named it data browser. I have over 400 projects, so I'm going to search here data browser project one and you got a preview of our second project there so uh, important that um, it also the system also will programmatically find any associated files in particular indices that need to be copied as well so there's 3202 files but there's also going to be that many index files so you'll see the number be over 6000 at this point we can add some tags so maybe I'll just add a tag for demo, uh, but you can add unlimited tags. And then we click copy. Now you see that there's 6,404 up here. Um, the reason 
um, is because it's the CRAM and the CRAM indexes. Now, we didn't actually copy the data out of the NHLBI hosted buckets. It simply created a symbolic link in our files tab in, in the project we specified. So let's go back to that project. So I remember the name now. Well, I'm going to type in data browser project one. Data browser project one here. To find um, the files, we click on the files tab. By the way, um, the files premium is um, a new version of the files tab, which will become standard in the future. And when um, it becomes standard, I'll uh, remake this part to show you the new features. So we click on files. And it loads up all 6,000. So on the bottom right, you'll see the total number of files, 6,400. You'll see the unlocked on the left side, you'll see the unlocked icon here and the demo tag. Watch the files and metadata video to learn more about metadata, but I just wanted to show you, you have all this rich metadata that you can filter by or use in your analysis. For the second part of the demo, I'm going to show you how to use the data browser to find controlled data. So let's first go to our controlled project. I'm going to type, start typing in the name of the project, data browser project two. So I named it data browser project two, controlled data Framingham heart study. And notice there is a red lock with the, the word controlled. So a controlled, pro so this is an important concept, a controlled project protects sensitive data by restricting access to users with only the appropriate dbGaP access permissions. So you have controlled projects and the standard open data projects. It has to do with the checking of the appropriate dbGaP credentials. Who Open data doesn't mean public. It means that it's still only accessible by the project membership. In this case, it's just me. Uh, but it has to do with dbGaP credentials to access this sensitive data. So if I wanted to invite a new member to this project, uh, they would need to have appropriate dbGaP credentials. So our second goal is to demonstrate how to query data browser for FHS data, and in particular, let's look for multi-sample BCFs in freeze eight. And let's also look for specific consent groups. So let's simulate only having access to one consent group. So the first thing I do is go to the data dropdown and click on data browser. Okay, so remember heart, lung, blood, and sleep and COVID and the other, which contains the top med exchange area files, as well as the training data sets. So I could look in heart disease, but I want to demonstrate this. So if we just type in Framingham, you'll see that um, two categories are popping up. The other has the open data trainings data set, but in heart disease, we have two studies. So this is important uh, based on prior work, I know that these PHS IDs um, pertain to different things. So the Framingham cohort is the parent study. So in, the, in here, still controlled, but you'll find a lot of phenotype information um, in that level of information. In the second one here that's, that's titled NHLBI Top Med Genomic Activities, that has to do with the um, NGS data and genotype data. So that's where you want to look. And that follows a similar pattern for other studies. So let's explore one, let's select it and explore one select. Remember, you can query across studies if you have appropriate credentials. So we have this screen. I don't have any saved queries, but let's start with the file. I think um, for these types of studies, it makes most sense starting with the file entity. So we have this rectangle, which represents all the files and all the parameters that we can query based off of. This can be moved up, up and down and also be minimized. There's 7,900 files. If we look at some of the names here, you'll see that there's a red 
locked icon. So that means it's controlled. Anyone can do this query here, but as soon as we try to either copy them to a project, I copy it to a con first of all, it will only allow us to it will only allow us to copy it to a controlled project. But before it allows us to do that, the system is going to programmatically check our dbGaP credentials to make sure we have access to this particular study and particular consent group. So let's let's do that. So let's search for a particular set of files. So remember, you can browse through all these things, but a lot of times I find it faster to start typing what you're interested in. So in this case, we want to find multi-sample VCF. So let's click, let's type VCF. And it'll, the that value only appears in one property, which is the data format property. So let's go ahead and click that. And remember when we change, when we select one of the properties, we need to refresh. So that cut it down to 3,000, about 3,700 files. That's too many and it's not as specific because I want to also filter for certain freezes. So I'm going to type in the word freeze. And currently for this particular study, we have freeze five and freeze eight. So I'm going to select freeze eight and then I change one of the properties. So I'm going to hit refresh and now we have 46. So I know because the files are broken down in consent group, this number checks out because we have 23 for the first consent group and 23 for the second consent group. So let's say that I have only have access to, uh, to, to one of the, uh, oops, let me see if I have to repeat. I do. So I'll quickly repeat because I accidentally refreshed my browser. Um, so just to review, type in BCF. I was clicking around too much. So we re refreshed that. Let's do freeze eight and we have 46. Okay. So I also want to search for consent. So instead of the value, now we have, um, two properties here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the first consent property. And I know um, I'll simulate that. I've only have access to this one, IRB MDS. So click filter by, and the 46 is crossed out. We refresh and now it's to down to the 23 chromosomes. At this point, we can click copy files to project. And remember, it's not actually copying, making a duplicate. It's symbolically linking it to our controlled data project. So we start to type in our name of the project data browser, and this will show project one and project two. It will not allow us to copy it to the standard open data project. We need to copy it to the control project. And this is something new users um, uh, have issue with because they don't, they don't remember that they need to make a controlled project. And that's simply that. So when you make the pr project, you know, rewatch the uh, uh, project and collaboration video to, re to remind yourself how to make the controlled project. We can tag it if we want to, but let's go ahead and copy selected files. And it happens very, very quickly. We can click on here as a shortcut and okay, I'm going to go here because it didn't change my tab. So I'm going to go here um, and show you how to find the project here, data browser. So if we click on files, you'll see that we have 23 down here on the bottom right always shows you your number of files. Okay. And you'll see that they are controlled. They are locked. And they're also tagged with the specific consent group. All the metadata is there. We can click on the file and see that we have the file size as well as um, metadata indicating freeze, PHS, accession number, consent, and um, another consent code. Now that we have completed both of our data browser goals, I want to summarize with four key takeaways. The first is that you can find all study files for NHLBI hosted data sets in the data browser. The data browser provides a really easy way to query for those study files. 
a red lock icon indicates that the file requires dbgap approvals and the system will programmatically check your credentials. The green opened lock icon indicates that the file is open to all users. So this includes the training data sets as well as the 1000 genomes files. Controlled files can only be copied to controlled projects. So if you want to work with controlled data, you need to first make a controlled project. That concludes the find hosted study files with data browser video. The next suggested video to watch is bring your own data uploads and imports. So this will go over how to upload data to your own projects, including um, using a command line tool or uploading through your web browser. It'll also talk about importing data from other cloud buckets that you may have control over. See you in the next video.